Hello. My name is Tucker Johnson, and you are experiencing NIMSY Live, where we talk about the latest and greatest in translation, localization, internationalization, culturalization, and all of that fun stuff that global companies need to delight their inter- international customers, or at least not to piss them off too much. Viewers, joiners, participants in this NIMSY Live workshop today, here's what you can expect from us. You can expect us to go over what you need to know in 2022 to have an awesome LinkedIn profile. Get noticed by potential employers, get the respect of your colleagues and your clients, and build a personal brand for yourself. All of this and more as I talk to my guest today, Stefan Huey, who is joining us from... Dallas, I want to say. Stefan, where, where are you joining us from today? I'm joining you from the Dallas Metroplex little town called Keller, Texas. Keller, Texas. Well, howdy, y'all. From, I'm sure you never get tired of... I'm sure you never get tired of that, right? <laughs> never. <laughs> well, Stefan, why don't you... Well, before I turn it over to you to, to talk about what, what's in store for us today with LinkedIn, a few housekeeping items here at um, from NIMSY Live. I do want to plug one cool thing that we have from Multilingual Media. Localization Today is a podcast by Multilingual Media. It is hosted by Mario Line Groot Nibelink. I'm a CEO and publisher over over there of Multilingual Magazine and CEO of Multilingual Media. And it's great. It's great. Lots of lots lots of people. Like she just started it a couple a couple weeks ago and lots of subscribers already. So it's getting pretty popular over there. Also, because it's been popular, it's kind of been trending in the um, trending in the 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 World Wide Web is out there. Um, Multilingual Mercantile. You can head on over to mercantile.multilingual.com and get 25% off with discount code NIMSY Live if you want if you want a cool hat like this, which I was supposed to take off before we went live, but I forgot to because this is a professional thing that we're doing here. I'm, I'm totally on brand then. You're totally on brand then. I've got swag all around me. Holy moly, I am a swag slut. I love me. I love me some good swag. Well, today we are talking about LinkedIn, and I am joined by my guest Stefan Huey, who is many things: VP of localization, researcher, writer, influencer. Stefan, why don't you why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Well, um, where to start? I'm a little bit of a mutt. I was uh, I was born in Belgium. I grew up in Switzerland, uh, been in the United States for many years. Since '93, I've been a citizen. I, I hold dual citizenship. Uh, became a citizen in 2003, I believe. And I've been in the localization industry for over 20 years, uh, and so. That's kind of my background. As of late, I've done quite a few things on LinkedIn, and right. I guess that gave you the idea to uh, to talk to me about that a little bit and well, share some of the knowledge. What really gave me the idea to talk to you, and I don't, I don't have my copy because I just cleaned my desk the other day. Um, but um, your recent article in Multilingual Magazine, tell us a little bit about that. What's it called? What's it about? Yeah, the uh, the era of the uh, localization influencer, is it here or not? I, I think that there's a little bit of a shift uh, in marketing and advertising in general. Uh, habits have changed. A lot of people are, are not consuming content in the same way as they were before. And thus, I think uh, there's a real opportunity for localization companies to take advantage of that and use uh, advocates. And uh, we've seen some of those evolutions uh, with uh, brand uh, advocates that are being engaged to to represent uh, LSPs and, and those kind of things. So that's what the article is about. And I, uh, I hope you'll read it. Yeah, go check it out, multilingual.com. It's in the latest issue, the 200th issue of Multilingual Magazine, which if, if it's not on your doorstep yet, then it will be soon. So stay tuned for that. Alrighty. Now, Stefan, I think here's what we wanted to do today. We wanted to go through the 20, 
the 20 things that you need to know for LinkedIn in 2022, which is directly from directly from the source. But before we get into that, I I wanted to invite people um, now not on the same tab because you won't be able to listen to us and do this at the same time. But if you're dialing in from a desktop or you have a mobile phone handy and you feel like harassing Tucker, you can head on over to my LinkedIn profile and you can find all of the things wrong <laughs> with my <laughs> LinkedIn profile. Um, and I purposefully have not updated it since we since we put this on the calendar. So I'm sure there's a few typos. I'm sure there's a few things that are out of date. And the reason I wanted to do this was because nobody, nobody is, nobody doesn't need an occasional refresh to their LinkedIn so profile. You mean to tell me that for the last couple of days when I saw that title, your LinkedIn stinks and I thought it was referring to my LinkedIn, it was really about yours? It was referring to mine. <laughs> Okay. So I've been going to therapy for a couple of days sitting, uh, because of this. crying, crying into your pillow. At night. I wasn't talking about you, Stefan. Steph, there are doing Stefan. All right. Hey, I want you to call. No, we're going to save this because there's a thing. There's a feature in LinkedIn that Stefan's going to talk about, um, about name pronunciation. So Stefan, I'm going to turn it over to you right now. Um, and give us a quick intro before we get into the list of 20 things from LinkedIn. Give us some of yeah. your insights. Your like, what are some of the the things that we need to be thinking about and chewing on as we um, delve in here? So, I'm believe it or not, I'm not that experienced. I'm fairly new to LinkedIn. I've been at it maybe for a year uh, with a little bit more gusto. And I thought uh, before we jump into the twenty fixes, we should wrap our brain around understanding LinkedIn LinkedIn a little bit better uh, maybe and look at the bigger picture because i think it's important to understand before we start tweaking um and and the exercise that i started with was i i try to think of linkedin as a person and what do you think they would want i put myself in in their shoes and i try to empathize with linkedin for a minute trying to think what it is that they would really desire and and what people would be interested in uh Reading, I think, was kind of the outset. All right, you're you're well, you're already tempting me into a tangent here, Stefan. Okay, because I think that's a really good point. Like thinking of LinkedIn as a person, what would they desire? And I've found, and I don't have the data to back this up, but I found great success in exploring the new features that LinkedIn is is pushing. So when LinkedIn pushes a new product, when they push a new feature, like they want to promote it, they're testing it. You're their beta testers, right? Yeah. So if you can be using those features, like when they did stories, remember when they, you know, <laughs> they tried to do TikTok or they tried to do Instagram on LinkedIn, yeah. that failed, but um, they were pushing it. So the people that were doing it were seeing a bump in their algorithm. Yeah. I, I think that we get a bump in our algorithm from doing this live streaming. Um, I don't think or a bump in a bump in our viewership engagement because of the live streaming, and I think that's somewhat artificial because I think live streaming is new and They're LinkedIn. It. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That, that makes sense. I mean, LinkedIn has evolved a lot. Uh, it used to be, I mean, when you think of LinkedIn twenty years ago, it was a site where you could post your resume essentially, and somebody could search for people with certain acumen and research resumes. But uh, right now, LinkedIn has evolved and, and it's become a professional social media platform so that the paradigm has completely shifted. And uh, just from a personal point of view, you can effectively make your own personal profile. We're not talking about an organization as NIMSI even, but yourself, you can make it your bro broadcast channel. And um, not everybody's going to do that, but you can definitely move it in direction. And, and I've, you know, put a lot of effort into, into changing or, or uplifting my own brand and my profile. Uh, so that's kind of where we're coming from in this, uh, in this exercise, so to speak. And that's, so, and that's why I'm talking to you. Yeah. And that's why we're talking. So <laughs> let's, let's go through it here. Creator mode. Yeah. So social Social media platform algorithms are engineered to reward content that gets the most interaction and posts that get more engagement through reactions and comments get rewarded and amplified. It's, it's not some arbitrary hierarchy LinkedIn has come up with. Uh, it's 
simply LinkedIn that's figured out human nature. We don't like to spend time on things we don't identify with or relate to. Mm. Um, and, and social media thus ranks the importance of your posts based on the way an audience shows appreciation. I think that's super important and kind of a key thing that everything revolves around. Mm. Uh, the order is not random. It's completely logical. And, you know, LinkedIn has back engineered uh, human behavior in, into their algorithms. Hasn't um, everybody? <laughs> That's the yeah. goal, right? Yeah. <laughs> Reverse engineer humanity. Exactly. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so the first, we have a couple of forks in the road, I think, and uh, with LinkedIn. And, and the first one, that's a really important one that I'd like to touch upon is creator mode. Uh, a lot of discussion out there, whether it makes sense to turn it on or not. I think it depends a little bit what you want to do with uh, with your LinkedIn. If you're planning on uh, posting a lot and sharing original content, uh, I think it's something you should do. And the main difference with creator mode is it, it essentially funnels people into follow, following you. If you keep your, your yeah. LinkedIn record regular, then the button that you'll see at the top will be a connection button. And um, that's not to say that if you have creator mode on and people are following you, you shouldn't be connecting. Uh, I have strong feelings about that too. You should continue to connect. But uh, I want to know your feeling. We'll get into that. But yeah. I, I want to know your feelings on the difference between connecting and following. But yeah. Yeah. So if, if you guys don't know, that's where that follow button comes from. You wonder, how yeah. do I get the follow button? Turn on creator Turn on mode. Creator mode. That's it. Exactly. And it's free. It's easy. It, it's like, do it yeah. <laughs> is, is kind of my take on it. Yeah. In a sense, it, it, it gives people another option. Not everybody wants to be connected to you. And yeah. if they want to follow you, obviously, if you don't have anything to say, or you don't post a lot, then might not be the way to go. So that's kind of that. The, the evaluation, so to speak. Uh, the my my next point is is really uh, probably the most important one. If you're serious about uh, about LinkedIn, uh, it's you should be become part of the community. Um, one of the things that is trickiest to figure out is the fact that you're really not competing with anybody but yourself, <laughs> and so you're actually helping your brand by lifting by lifting other people up so that that's something tricky that doesn't make a lot i mean we're used to working for companies and competing with other lsps or what have you in this space you're not competing with anybody and by lifting people up you're actually lifting up yourself so support people's posts everybody on linkedin is looking to do the same thing they want to be noticed and mm -hmm. attention begets attention. True. Uh, you got to give some attention to get some back. So that's the, the easiest way to get noticed and to get the attention is to like and to comment. So find some, you know, find content that you like, follow people that you think are, are putting out good material and like and comment a lot. And add value. That helps. Yes. Add value, right? Add value. I, I mean, that should, be, it should go without saying, but I'm going to say it. Like, don't just comment like, I like your post, right? Yeah, that's not, yeah, do you have that's to... the way the LinkedIn uh, algorithms work that way too. When you're going to leave a comment, if you leave it in three words, that's not nearly as valuable as if you engage in a conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that counts for the people that are posting as well. If somebody comments on your post, respond back and engage in a conversation, ask a question back, keep the conversation going. That's going to amplify the, uh, the traffic to your, to your posts. I have one bonus killer tip. This one is, this one alone is the, the best thing you could ever do to develop community. Turn on the bell is turn on the bell. What the yeah, heck does is, that mean? What is well, turn on the bell? So, uh, unfortunately I think LinkedIn hasn't rolled it out to everybody yet, but <sighs> hopefully most of us you have access to a feature i don't yeah so it's so there's a little bell in people's profiles so let's say you like tucker johnson's material really really a lot let's say and you want to become friends with him you think that you have a lot in common um you know i actually tell people when i turn the bell on for them i send them a message and i say hey i'm going to turn on the bell for you because i don't want to miss any of your posts 
And that way, when somebody posts something, you're going to be notified right away. You get it into your, onto your phone. And that allows you to quickly, you know, give a like and support or leave a, leave a message. And that's how, I mean, you build relationship uh, very easily that way, because again, everybody's looking for the same thing. You're looking to, you know, uh, to get noticed. So if you turn on the bell for somebody, you're going to actually make it so that you develop a relationship with that person and you're supporting them. Obviously, do it for people that you're really interested in and think yeah. have good content. Sure. You just don't do it for anybody. But I think this is a great way of of developing, you know, a, a relationship with somebody on LinkedIn. So the next point that I re quickly re like to make. Really quick, really quick yeah, here. Um, tangents as usual is our friend, the Sicilian Wanderer, asks, somehow my engagement dropped since I turned creator mode on. I get a fraction of views to most of my original content compared to when I had the mode switched off. It's not just because I'm too ugly. No, you're not ugly, Dario. You're interesting to look at. Um, I, th I love your, your content, Dario. And I think Dario, I was just commenting on his content today. Um, yeah. He, he had, uh, go follow the Sicilian Wanderer on YouTube. It, it's, it's great. Good stuff, yeah. Very original. Love the photography. I'm yeah, it's great. An oil painter. I love the black and white stuff uh, as well. So it's, I'm very visually... But, um, I don't understand the Italian, uh, but visually I'm very attracted to what uh, what Dario does. Uh, you know, the creator mode thing, I, I would say this. When I turn it on uh, for a minute or two, I had the same feeling. And um, it's often, listen, when you post something and for half an hour you don't get the first like, uh, it's enough to send you to the shrink. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. So, I, you know my philosophy has changed a little bit uh, over over time and i'm when i'm putting it out there i'm not worried about it too much anymore you just got to trust you know if the content's yeah. good it'll get engagement and that's really that's really well, what it if, is if the content's good and mm -hmm. You sacrificed the right color of lamb on the altar of the algorithm gods during a full moon, right? So it's like content is – because I, I see that you're getting to the next point here. Yeah. Original content is king, and I'll let you talk about that. And But to your point, you know, if, if a post that you worked really hard on doesn't blow up and you thought it would, do it again. Right, do it yeah. again. It's it's a numbers game. I post some stuff that I think is going to be killer, and it gets like a few likes, and then I'll post some stuff that's just like a repost of something else, and it'll go viral. So you never know. And it's easy, to Dario. Doubt you're a creator. Yourself. You get that. It's easy to doubt yourself. Yeah, and we do it all the time. But so. how how do they prioritize original content, though, Stefan? Or do, do they, what, what does that mean? So original actually, content is king. So the, a, a couple of things come into play with that. Um, you know, I see a lot of, the thing that I really don't like on LinkedIn is what I call lazy posting. There's people that just repost articles continuously from, you know, other venues. And you see that doesn't really work. It doesn't really get any reaction. LinkedIn, the, the algorithms favor content that keeps the user in the, in, in, in the application, so to speak. So if you're just posting a link, it's you're probably not going to get a got a, you're probably not going to get a lot of a lot of circulation, so to speak, because the algorithms bump that down in the in, in the importance. And so that's why I'm a strong believer in original content. I actually think that it's better for you to think of original content as well, because you know in the end. What you're doing is you're building your personal brand and it's an extension of your resume. And so what good that it's not right. like Facebook or Instagram. You're not reposting. The, and and it's know, good it practice. Really like you. writing, yeah. writing is one of the best exercises mm -hmm. you can do. Right. And if you if you're disciplined and you say for the next 30 days, I'm going to post one LinkedIn post a day and I'm going to write something. And um, it doesn't have to be groundbreaking. It's just, it's an exercise. And the more you do it, the better you get. And I, one a day is too much for me. So, you know, I have a regular yeah, day too much job too. too. So it's, I, I, do, <laughs> I do one or two a week. 
Um, and I try which to mix is all it you up need. a little bit. Which is all yeah. you need. You shouldn't be. I'm to the point where it's like I have to limit myself because I've got a, mm. so much stuff, you know, stuff from Nimsy, stuff from Multilingual. I've got a lot of stuff that I want to – all of these live streams, right? Um, I've got all of the stuff that I want to talk about, so I have to limit myself so I'm not just spamming people. Um, but really, a couple times a week, I think, is the sweet spot. For yeah, like and people are going to get sick of you, too, if you post every day. Nobody can be interesting every day, uh, you know, once or twice a I'll week, in my mind, uh, is, uh, is, is good enough. And, and when you post, try to do it with something original that you've designed and if you're going to be sharing videos or articles, try to keep them on the platform. I I don't I I typically don't link. Yeah. At least if you if you got a link, link in the comments, but don't link in the actual post because it'll throttle the engagement. Yep. And that's, that's a good point. Gonna, it is nobody nobody is interested in posting somebody in, in something that nobody's gonna gonna see. Yep. So that's the other thing that's I think is crucial when you design a post on LinkedIn is you should be thinking uh, about it from a perspective of engagement. What am I doing in this post to engage the reader? Because you're really fishing for comments. And the reason you're fishing for comments and, and, and reactions is because that will actually promote the post to be shown to other people. Yeah, the more comments you get, the more exactly. people LinkedIn's going to put it in front. Uh, let me just add to that, though, by saying another way of thinking about it, because fishing for comments seems very kind of kind of cheesy. Um, another way of thinking about it is engaging in conversations. You know, adding you know value add conversations, generating conver generating interesting discussions. Um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't mean that in a conniving kind yeah, of yeah, way, yeah. like I'm trying to trick people. I know, I'm I know. just saying if you're going to make a point, engage your audience. The way I usually do it is I ask questions because when you ask a question, you're essentially, you know, asking people to answer you. Yeah. So that's, that's usually what I do. The question thing, the question thing, it's, it's overdone. Like everybody asks questions, right? And it's also... It's also puts, it makes you vulnerable, right? Because you look really silly when you you have a post that's asking a question. You no one comments on it, right? So yeah, I, yeah. You gotta gotta ask good good questions. You gotta ask good I questions. Ask, I usually ask good questions, and I ask people to, or I get people to engage with me because I I try to think of topics that uh, are of interest and people are having an opinion about. Yeah, that's the other thing. Find a topic that you know people are going to have a strong opinion about. Well, that's what that I was going to say. Is like I don't ask questions; I piss people off, right? There, there's a fine there's a fine line between asking questions and starting arguments, right? Right. And as I, I was just talking to someone this morning, uh, gosh, you and I both we've both been in events all day, right? That's right. And you know, someone's writing a response to an article that I wrote about QA because I basically said QA is dead. Every every quality assurance manager deserves to lose their job and die of starvation. See, that's and quality statement. quality you know, is not respected. Yeah, and you know Tucker's evil, but eh, it works. Engagement's engagement, and I don't think quality's dead. Quality's fine. Um, quality's fine. So we're good. Engagement, engagement, dive engagement. Into some, uh, into some tips, I guess. Now, right? Let's dive into some tips. So diving right in here, going straight to the source. Now, what do I mean by going straight to the source? Straight to the source means we're going to the LinkedIn blog, and there's a link here. Oh, I should probably put that in the comments. I'll, I'll put that in the comments somehow. There's a blog. Oh, it is in the comments already. It's in the description for this event. So if you head on over to the details tab, if you're joining us live, or if you're joining, watching the recording, you'll find a link to this. And it's a blog published for LinkedIn called 20 Steps to a Better LinkedIn Profile in 2022. And to our point previously, if if we're doing what LinkedIn wants us to do, here here's the you know we're sacrificing the right animals on the right altars. Ideally, ideally, we're going to have a good experience with LinkedIn. So let's see what the LinkedIn demigods choose, what they decree, and we're gonna. This is gonna be somewhat of a lightning round because there's twenty of these bad boys. Um, choose the right profile picture. All right, Stefan, I know you have 
thoughts on this? I do have thoughts on I, that. So do as I say, not as I do. Make it of your face. Make sure that they can see your face. All of my profile pictures for the last year have had a picture of Multilingual Magazine obscuring half of my face, partly because I was ashamed of my beard, but mostly just because it's uh, – I. <laughs> would, you, would you agree that as in the profession that you were in and you kind of try to keep it hip and, and, and fresh, so to speak, that you have a little bit more leeway yeah. to be creative with yours than maybe somebody who's looking to be a – I would By say president that president of a company, you, you can, I mean, yeah. So I, me, I work for myself and I've kind of branded my, my personal brand is kind of influencery type trendsetter kind of guy. So I can like do stuff I wouldn't recommend to a recent college graduate to do right. on their LinkedIn profile. So you see here on my LinkedIn profile, my face is obscured. Now the way I get around that is my banner up here. I have a full picture of my ugly mug up here so people still can and also because my face is all over the freaking internet can, right can i tell you what disappoints me a little bit in your in your profile oh gosh Where we're I only on number one yeah room, room for no, let's 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 save that save that write it down write it down because okay. I, right. I i i don't okay. want i got it in my head go ahead all right i because I, I want to do lightning around here so okay. choose the right profile picture make it of your face um make sure that it's well well lit um it's pretty basic Hard to, hard to screw this one up. Don't do a full body shot because people can't see your face. Um, don't do an avatar. This is LinkedIn. This is a professional network. This isn't VR chat. This isn't YouTube. This is a professional network. You want people to see what you look like. Well, doesn't that lead to discrimination? Potentially. Do it anyways, right? Because I don't click on LinkedIn profiles without pictures. I just don't. And I hire people from LinkedIn. Number two, add a background photo. Stefan, what's a background photo as I bring it back up here? <laughs> yeah, so the background photo is the one for you says don't take me more serious, seriously than I uh, take myself. Yep. And I think that's perfectly on brand for you. <laughs> on, on brand for me? You can put whatever you want in your background photo. Go to Canva. I'm always shilling for Canva. Go to Canva and they have templates for this. Just typed in LinkedIn background or LinkedIn banner and they'll have the perfect size and all of that stuff and you can make yourself a nice little one. I wanted to talk for a second here about real estate, this concept of real estate, meaning space that you have on your page. Now you have a photo here, you have a photo here, you have a description, you have a tagline, you have this talks about if creator mode is turned on. This is one of the things that you get from creator mode. You have all this stuff. You have the featured section. So use the real estate wisely. Don't put something in your background photo that's already in here, unless you're me, right? Um, don't put something in your dis um, background photo that's already can be found here. So if I put in my background photo, founder of Nimsy Insights, I'm not using my real estate wisely. So I just want to talk for a second about real estate. So that's number two. Number three. I got to I gotta interject uh, one more thing, though. Uh -oh. it's, it's my criticism of your, of your profile. But if I don't say it now, it's not going to be relevant. I was anymore. trying. All right, all right, all right, all right. So the, the thing that disappoints me a little bit is that you don't have a moving video intro uh, right there. That's, I do. That's such a... I do, I do. You do? Yeah, you don't have it up? I do, but that's only, you can only watch those on mobile, I think. Mm -hmm. Right? Or maybe it's because I'm viewing my own profile. Oh, so what, what Stefan is talking about here is, we'll go to his, Stefan. Okay. What he is talking, oh, see, there, I had it right there. Here, refresh. Yeah, it's a Microsoft Edge. Oh, it's a Microsoft Edge thing because look, when I click away from it, it comes up. Okay. Um, but what he's talking about is you can record a quick. See, there you go. You can record a quick video here, and let's just watch. Hi, I'm Stefan Yui, and it's a pleasure to welcome you here. I have over 20 years of experience in the localization industry as a result-oriented, hands-on expert leader. I'm currently vice president at Communicate, and I was raised in Belgium and Switzerland. I speak fluent Dutch, French, German, and English. As a dual citizen, I've lived in the United States in cities like San Francisco, Los Angeles, Boston, San Jose, and now Dallas. So 
that's cool. Like this feature, this talking about real estate, you've got 30 seconds to tell people anything that you want to tell them. They originally rolled this out, I think, as a feature to help people understand how to pronounce your name, which mm-hmm. is important if your name's Stephen Huey. It um, is. <laughs> but no, kidding. <laughs> soon, you know, conniving minds like us figured out that we could also use it to put a 30 second elevator pitch in there. So, yeah, it's, it's, such low hanging fruit for me because there's not a lot of people that are willing to go on camera Mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it's going to take an hour of your time to put a little video together and you stand out right away. Yep. Make your headline more than just a job title. So when we're talking about headlines, what are we talking about? We're talking about this right here, localization, VP, language industry writer, multilingual and local ambassador. Um, now, what I like, yeah, this is more, so this tells a bunch of different stuff. I would, I would argue that this is like more than just a job title. Um, I like to keep it somewhere in between. Um, they only give you so many characters here though. Yeah. So I fail on this one because I just list my job titles here. Um, but I think what they're going for here with this piece of advice is that you should, you should, People looking at your profile should walk away knowing a little bit more about you than what you just just what you do. Right? I think it, it also depends a little bit what your what your goal is here. Like it my goal is to broaden my network and connect with people. And so I'm trying to put my tentacles as far as I can to show, you mm-hmm. know, more range, so to speak. If you're solely focused on, you know, looking for a job in a particular specific right. field, maybe you're not putting four or five things, uh, I'm thinking. And and also, like, for this, like, I just watch my own behavior, and, like, I hate it when people don't put their job title. Because, like, when I'm using LinkedIn, I want to be able to look at someone yeah, and be like, I oh, agree. that's the project manager from We Localize, right? right? Like, I know exactly what you do now. I know what you're all about. Not really. But I want that. But you shouldn't do that because you shouldn't give me what I want so quickly because if you have that, I'm scrolling past your profile. But if you say passionate project manager, manager dedicated to serving localization clients, oh, all right, I'm going to have to click on it. I'm going to have to click on it, right? Yeah. I'm going to have to visit your pro- profile. And remember all this real estate, real estate, real get out of here messaging, all this real estate up here, doesn't matter. It doesn't count for, for Jack if if people aren't even getting to the property. It's All right, I, I'm moving on to number four, Stefan. I'm sorry. We got, right, we're got we lightning rounding this. Um, what, was, <laughs> what was I thinking? Getting through 20 of these in a podcast with you. <laughs> um, number four, uh, turn your summary into a story. So the summary, essentially, when we're talking about a summary... We're talking about this longer section here. Um, it's an activity, the about section. And this essentially is your cover letter. You know, yeah, back in the day. There. Yeah, back in the day of LinkedIn. It's probably, I think it's out of date. Um, yeah, a lot of it's out of date. But back in the days of cover letters and all of that stuff, what was a cover letter for? A cover letter was and still is to basically fill in the gaps that are left by your resume, essentially. So it's like, hmm, you don't have any job experience, you know, you can write about that in your cover letter. You had three years where you weren't working, write about that in your cover letter, right? So this is this about section. This is your best friend if you're just starting your career and you're in that awkward position where... It's like, well, I don't have any job experience. Every employer wants job experience. I don't, I don't even have anything to put on my LinkedIn. The about section. The about section is where you get to talk about any cool projects you've worked on before, what, what you like, how much you love learning, what your areas of focus are, any of that stuff right here don't in the about section. Don't be scared to update it is what I would say too. Yeah. It should be updated regularly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it should should be updated regularly. You notice how I'm just like moving on to the next point. <laughs> Declare war on buzzwords, Stefan. What's your take on buzzwords? 
Yeah, it's that's a fine line because um, listen, I, there's certain words that I have to use on a regular basis in order to, you know, get show up in the searches and what synergy. Have you. So there's synergy um, is my favorite. So it's it's tricky. It's th this is a tricky one because it's easy enough to say that you shouldn't be using certain words, but. Well, it's like, you know, it's, okay, that, that's that's adorable that you're an excellent communicator. But you know what? Everybody. I mean, don't put excellent communicator on your resume, right? Don't put proficient in Microsoft Office on your resume. Why? See, because that kind of thing, you have the, the ability right now to show that you're an excellent yeah, communicator. show it. If you're Show an excellent it. communicator, then record a video. Yes. And, you know, you, nobody needs to read that. They'll actually see it. Yep. Buzzwords be gone. Number six, grow your network. And this is, gonna, this is what we've been talking about this whole time. Yep. Reaching out to people, um, starting interesting conversations, all of that stuff, asking for connections, um, sending those connections requests really quickly. I'll, I'll go back just one sec. Um, I would say if you're sending those connection requests and um, the typical LinkedIn etiquette is you can send connections requests to people you know. Right? This isn't Twitter where it's just pandemonium. Um, so ideally you're supposed to have met somebody before or have you know a reason to be connecting. And that's why they introduced the follow button um, with the creator mode so that you don't have to know someone in order to follow them. But if you're reaching out to someone to connect with them and you don't actually know them, that's okay. Just do it from a desktop computer. Don't do it from your phone because on your desktop computer, when you send connection requests, you're able to add a note to it. And that's when you introduce yourself. Hi, my name is I Dr. don't Johnson. ever send a connection request without a note. I think it's foolish. Why would you do that? I mean, if you can insert a note and do a little introduction, that's what you should be doing. And I'm looking for people that I have something in common with or I've interacted with. So... I don't just send them willy nilly as well. The, the most amazing thing that I have seen uh, actually got it yesterday when I try to connect with somebody is some people have this. It, I haven't I don't even know where that feature is in LinkedIn, but it must be something that you turn on so people cannot connect with you. And the only way they can connect with you is if they know your email. And that's kind of the litmus test. Right. When you try to connect with them, it says. This person wants to connect with you only if you know their email address. And I'm thinking, like, why? Why would you do that? Yeah. I mean, you want to potentially meet somebody that's interesting, uh, that you want to be connected with. You're ruling out a bunch of people. So I would strongly recommend not turning that on. Yeah, so, but that's a good point. Um, I will just say, though, that some people, especially people um, who have survived or lived through abusive situations or whatnot some people don't want to be found so easily which that's that's understandable so I it's like hashtag not all introverts um i wanted to go here and here we're going to get very meta we're going to get very like live section here because this is the live page that i'm bringing up during the live stream and i wanted to show you that if i click on this and the sound might get funky here Oh, it's not going to let me click on it full screen. No. That's nah, not going to let me do that either. Um, oh, if I go over here in the comments and down, there's also this networking tab up here. Sorry, I'm used to it on mobile and it looks different on mobile. But you have the comments tab and that's where most of you are hanging out right now. Hi. And here is the networking tab tab and in this networking tab here's the cool thing about linkedin events is like people that you're not normally connected to depending upon their privacy settings that they have set um people that you're not normally connected to guess yeah. what you can talk to them you can send them messages you can send them connection requests um so in events and that's a good reason to go sign up so register for these events as you see them um coming up so Next, number seven, lightning round, listing relevant skills. So what we're talking about here with the skills section is after about, after the experience, the ex experience in education this is pretty self-explanatory, but under skills down here. Now, frankly, Stefan, I've, I don't care about skills. Like I don't, unless this like feeds the LinkedIn machine to know like who to recommend for me to connect with. I don't really care about this. I've never looked at these because, frankly, there's no 
safeguards in place to make sure that people aren't just lying. And it's weird. Like, look, leadership. I've been endorsed by two colleagues for leadership. Um, I have 50 skills. God, you, you know, sorry, you can't see this. Um, see all 50 skills. Well, now we know it's a lie, right? It's it's qualification inflation. Yeah. Essentially. Sometimes what you see too is people that have like 800 endorsements and I'm like, <laughs> well, did that even happen? <laughs> well, good for them. Good for them. Um, because we're going to, we're going to talk just in a bit here about how to ask for endorsements. And I think that's actually a really good practice. So spotlight the services you offer. LinkedIn now has a feature where you can actually add services to your profile. So if you're a freelancer, if you're a contractor, you're providing translation services, you're providing project management services. Um, I don't use this because I've always either had a, had a job or had a company, but I think this could be very useful if you're a contractor selling services from your personal profile. And that's the other reason I don't use it. I've got a brand profile. I've got Nimsy. We've got a page so I can sell services through there. I think it's a great way to connect with people though. So if you're, if you're crossing paths with somebody and, and you, you know that they play a role in the industry or what have you, you, it's easily done to go and endorse somebody and you'd be surprised the reaction you get, uh, you know, it's the start of a friendship uh, usually. So it's a good thing to do. I love endorsing. I, I don't know why I do. Okay. So here's what you do guys. Anybody so, out there. So I'll endorse you Tucker uh, after today and you'll endorse me. Deal. A uh, deal. Deal. All oh, right. Cool. Done. Um, <laughs> Here's what you do. If if you're in a boring meeting, and let's be honest, we all we all know we all have at least one recurring meeting on our calendar that's boring and just not very valuable, that's where you write recommendations. That's what I've done before. Like I've sat in meetings before where it's like at the end of it, there's like five people pinging me, Oh, thank you for the recommendation. I'm like, Yeah, thank you for killing time. Well, I had to look through these financial statements. Oh, I wanted to go through these two together. Number nine, spread the endorsement love. And number 10, manage your endorsements more proactively. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I think endorsements are bullshit. But um, basically what that means is go endorse other people and you can manage your endorsements. So if someone out there endorses you for like this guy is the best drug dealer I've ever had, right? And you're like, oh shit, I don't want this on my – you can actually go in and hide that from your public profile. So don't worry. Don't worry about that. Number 11, take a skills assessment test. This is something that LinkedIn is trying to push, I do believe. it's a, I didn't actually know about this until I was doing some light preparation for this thing. And there's this button right here that says take a skill quiz. And okay, so this actually looks kind of cool. And I would actually recommend you guys go do this, especially, especially if you don't have a lot of like job experience, but you've got a lot of skills, you know, and that, that old saying about like, Oh, no one will hire me because I don't have experience, but I can do a better job than well, take a skill assessment because that actually looks somewhat interesting there. Number 12 request recommendations. All right, here we have it. Now recommendations are different from recommendations are different from endorsements. Endorsements are like, and Stefan, I'll endorse you for project management. And you're like, yay, thanks. That's it. Re recommendations are more your traditional letter of referral type situation, right? So these are down. It goes, there's more effort that goes into yeah. recommend, recommending somebody. Exactly. You actually have to say something sensible and it's got to make sense. Yeah. And on your public profile, what people will be able to see, they'll be able to see all the received, all the people that have endorsed you. Shout out to Angel, Rodrigo, Gabriel, and five other people. And they'll also be able to see all of the recommendations that you've given to people, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> see, see all 30 given. <laughs> I've given 30 recommendations and I've gotten five. There is no such thing as karma. Screw that. That also tells you <laughs> that also tells you that you've uh, you've um, I've sat in a lot of boring meetings. <laughs> The universe pays you back, though, Tucker. It's, it's not always a direct. Uh, I I don't. That's not why I give right. It's a good. Uh, it's, 
it's good practice nevertheless yeah and that's you know, a, that's we're, we're actually question. getting to the meat to the meat of the of of what i think is so important and different with linkedin or linkedin profile uh to date yeah and, well, let and, me just read through these yeah. and then and then i'm gonna let you um freestyle here so number 13 14 are showcase your passion for learning and 14 is share media and marketing collateral i'm just gonna buzz through these 15 get credit for your thought leadership with publication so these are all different avenues that we're talking then we're going to bunch them together all different avenues for publishing stuff out there if you want to push if you want to add value share relevant content from your linkedin feed add comments of course, we've already talked about adding comments. Um, follow relevant influencers in your industry. Become an employee advocate. And 20, publish long-form content and use it to start conversations. And yes, we did just lightning round the heck out of the last 40% yeah, they, they of, of this. They all kind of bunched together as, as the content They're that we related. should have under featured yeah, and you can go to that sales blog and read. They have a nice little write-up about each one of them. But, um, all right, now that I've gotten that out into the universe, what were you saying, Stefan? Well, so the the main thing I think is that is so different with LinkedIn profiles nowadays is that you have this featured section in the middle, and that's really where you can shine because you can make that your – your own brand uh, publication, uh, so to speak, and your own channel. It's not unlike a, a YouTube channel where you have mixed media that you can share that gives any uh, reader a lot more information about the expertise you have, the things you have to say, the experience, uh, and, and you know whatever it is that you, you want to share, so to speak. So I recommend turning on that featured section for sure if you're going to be sharing content. And, uh, again, original content is king there, I think. Yeah, let's talk about that. Really... Let's talk about that yep. before um, before Javi has a, has a stroke in the comment section here. <laughs> um, he wants to know, what is relevant content on LinkedIn? What is relevant content on LinkedIn? So, yeah, that's... I. I think it can be anything that you want it to be, but it all depends on what your brand, what you want your brand to be. Isn't that, doesn't that ring true? I mean, if you want to be known as, you know, somebody super serious in, in, in engineering, you're going to have lots of posts about engineering and that's what you're going to try to connect with. And that's the network that you're building. It all, de it all depends on what you're, what you're looking to accomplish in my mind. I suppose a, a cynical, response to it is kind of this acceptance that everybody's selling something i'm selling yeah. something you're selling something everybody's got something to sell well a you're lot selling yourself yeah i think exactly you're selling yourself so what are the key features you want to highlight and more importantly who are you selling yourself to right. because knowing who you're selling yourself to is wow this sounds dirty um well <laughs> Well, if it didn't, now it does. Sorry, guys. Um, knowing who you're selling I mean, yourself. My brain hadn't traveled that direction, but there you go. Thank you. But knowing knowing your your stakeholder, your customer persona, so to speak, um, yeah. is going to inform what you um, what you're posting about. If you're trying to get a job, um, which, by the way, in case it needs said, LinkedIn is. LinkedIn shouldn't be something that you just go to when you're looking for a job, like I, what Stefan was saying earlier. It helps to be updating it on a regular basis, going through it, not just when you're looking for a job because employers are going to go back and they're, they're – you can tell when someone's just looking for a job, right? Um, so remain active on that. But um, relevant content is content that adds value to me. That's my answer, and I'm sticking to it. It's content that adds value with the um, – Additional clarifier, content that adds value to your key stakeholders, to the people yeah. that you're trying to add value to. Now, if you're trying to – I try to add value to – my key stakeholders are whoever my VP of sales tells me are my key stakeholders. First of all, let's just get that out of the way. And also, like in the content that I put out there into the world, I think of my key stakeholders as – this sounds really cheesy, but – 
I really think of some of my key stakeholders as all the people out there in the world that prior to 2020 were left behind by the localization elite, so to speak. The people that didn't get invited to speak at events. That's a noble goal, man. Yeah, I didn't have. Well, I told you it was cheesy. I told you it was oh, cheesy. It but you know, this is this is the new normal, and nowadays anybody can join events and. Um, my hashtag that I always use, kill the webinar. Like, I think we've killed events. I'm coming for the webinar now. Watch out, webinars. I'm coming for you. Because webinars are a pain in the ass. Live streaming is the future. Yeah. Right? But um, trying How to make... How much fun is this? We're having fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're having fun. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, lots of fun here. All right. I, I don't know if we answered Javi's question, but he's never happy. <laughs> <laughs> so relevant content is content that adds value to your key stakeholders. That's my answer and I'm sticking to it. That's a, it's kind of a litmus test for me when I'm, when I'm writing articles or making a video, what have you, I'm trying to think, is it going to interest some, somebody? And I've made lots of mistakes. That's kind of the other thing that I quickly want to touch upon. If you're nervous about sharing content and you get queasy about original content, because it really, puts yourself out on the line, I would say, just do it. You know, we all have the same, you know, I hate seeing myself on camera. I'm going to be watching, you know, the recording of this and I'm going to see all kinds of things that are not perfect about me. And, you know, that's yeah. the way it is with anybody really. Uh, and, you know, I think that going bald made oh, me a that, lot bolder. Yeah. That, <laughs> bolder. That, that... That's fine. That's, you know, that's, that's what we, every time I finish a live stream, I just spend the rest of the day rewatching the YouTube video, critiquing myself, <laughs> sobbing in a corner. No, I used to, I used to, I, you, there have been live streams when we first started that I would literally be crying like in a corner, like literally like this big, ugly man crying, sobbing in a believe, corner. But it's it broke me to get discouraged. It broke it's me easy for to a little while. It's about it and, you know, to, feel like you really, you know, didn't do something right. It, everybody, you know, that's the big revelation. Ev literally everybody feels the same way. So you just got to do it. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it'll work and you, from the mistakes, you're going to learn. So the more content you put out, if a post doesn't work, you'll probably figure out why it wasn't working that well and why something else uh, was better. Yep. That's it's time. And I wanted to give a quick plug. Check out LinkedIn Spark. And there's a URL here in the deck. Um, I should, you know, I'll should, i post the URL as a comment to this afterwards. Um, it looks like a cool event. I just signed up. And, of course, it's hosted in LinkedIn events. Um, go sign up. It, it's an event to help people learn how to better sell on LinkedIn. To learn how to better sell on LinkedIn. So we'll see you there. I think it's March 15th. I should have put the date on here. It's March 15th. I apologize. But I did. I wanted to plug LinkedIn stuff because I basically stole all of their content from their blog today. So You're LinkedIn. Just making sure they don't kick you off, uh, off their platform for plagiarism. Yeah, exactly. LinkedIn, if you're watching, love you. Love the work that you do. Great platform. Love the changes around here. When are you going to put me on payroll as one of your featured creators? Let's talk. I'll have my people call your people. All right, not mentioned. A, a couple things that the LinkedIn didn't mention that I just want to keep going over. We talked about the profile video, Stefan. Thank yep. you for bringing that up. Do it. It's so easy. It's fun. And if you're a TikToker, like if you're under 25, like you can get, <laughs> your video is going to be so cool. Like, send, me a, send me a message. Uh, send me a private message on LinkedIn if you want some tips on how to make your, your own video. If you have no experience with it, I'll be happy to give you some tips. Because I've learned some hard lessons there as to what works and what doesn't. Yeah, or, or ask your teenager niece, because I guarantee you, anybody <laughs> under 20. Or your old son, yeah. <laughs> right? I guarantee you. So the profile video can be good for name pronunciation. Um, the tagline versus the description. We talked about real estate. Um, don't don't repeat. Don't, don't repeat your tagline in your description. Um, featured content. Featured content is something that we didn't talk about. Let's talk about that. How is that not on the list? How is featured? So featured content. Now, if you have creator mode turned on, featured content is going to be here at the top of your page. If you don't have creator mode turned on, featured content, I think it's going to be a little bit further down on your page. But featured content's a great way just to kind of highlight some of the cool stuff that you've done, some of the projects. Really make this your own. Really give it um, 
a, you know, send people to places that are going to let them get to know like what you've done, what you've worked on. It's easy for me because I can just link to a bunch of NIMSY stuff. Um, but that's your body of work there. That's the cool thing. Yeah. It stays there. It's and your, if you don't want, you know, if you have one that bombed, you can take it out so, and not show it, show it anymore. Yeah. It stays there, right? Which is nice. Um, but hold that thought. It should stay there, but it doesn't always hold that thought. Because I, I wanted to show you this. Um, where's, the, where's my experience section? If I go down here to experience, they've got this where you can add things to different positions. So when I was a program director at Moravia, I, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. So, you know, I wrote this blog. I worked on this project. Um, so here's a blog that I wrote called I Hate Charging Rush Feeds. And here's why. Ooh, clickbait. Um, check that out at blog.moravia.com or wherever it is now. However, these right here, broken links because it's linking to Moravia stuff that I don't have control. Uh, yeah, yeah. So see, there's a reason why you shouldn't be linking to out, uh, out of the platform stuff. Right. So I, I wanted to show that emoji use, um, I've I have fully accepted and embraced the use of emojis in my online personal professional and I use that word lightly persona. Um, I encourage you to as well, and yeah. I, I'm going to go on record and say I encourage you to use emojis in your professional communication. <gasps> Stupid American. Here's why: because so much context is lost, so much body language, so much voice yeah. um, is lost in written communication, particularly when you're adding the additional layer of cross-cultural communication, which many of us in this industry are also dealing with. Yep. Emojis, with you 100%. emojis can help people. It's the difference between someone thinking that you're funny or someone thinking that you're an asshole, or maybe they'll think you're a funny asshole and live streaming, live streaming. I'm doing it. Oh, what, what, eh. Obviously I'm a fan. If you'd like to talk to me more about it, if you, I, I'm big on supporting people getting into it. So if you want to get into it, talk to me. I'm I'm happy to make that happen. I love it. There's a real it's a real good buzz to be live and to know that you know the pressure is on to leave a good impression. I hope I'm I gave you a a, a decent impression this uh, this afternoon, Tucker. You did, you did, sir. And I I just have to show you guys this. We've got a bunch of stuff coming up here. Um, uh, you talk about live streaming. It's a buzz. I have a problem. I really do have a problem when it comes to live streaming. I hope this isn't going to cut us off. Events. We have... Oh, it's not going to show me all of those. We've got like five events coming up, guys. Um, we have workshops coming up. We have a workshop on client communication. We have an event to talk about SAP, um, International Global SAP Implementation. We have an event to talk about cybersecurity and localization. We have all of these different things going on here on Nimsy Live, and I just realized that we're out of time, so I gotta start wrapping this up. You know what to do, guys. Like, like, subscribe, share. If hopefully you were playing along at home, updating your LinkedIn profile. As let us know, let us know how you liked it. Give us a comment and send me a send me a connection request and and let me know how you felt we did. Yeah, yeah, and all of these all of these people here in the networking tab. They're your new best friends. They're your new colleagues. So send those connection requests. We have 50 people hung out with us. 50 people made it to the end of this. That means there's no reason why everybody in this event today shouldn't be walking away with 50 new, 50 new LinkedIn requests. Yeah, so. I'm looking forward to getting those connection requests. And I really thank you for having me along for the ride, Tucker. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you. So I'll take us out here. My name is still Tucker Johnson, and this is still Nimsy Live, where we talk about the latest and greatest in localization, internationalization, culturalization, and all of that fun stuff. I'd like to thank Stefan, my guest today, for joining us. I'd like to thank all of the people out there in the industry that participate in Nimsy Research and make it possible to do what we do. And I'd like to thank everybody in chat, all of these guys over here. You guys are the rock stars. You guys are what makes Nimsy Live, Nimsy Live. So with that, I'm out of here. I'm gone for a week. I'm going on vacation. 
and I don't have any more live streams. So you get to take a break, and we'll see you the Monday I get back at 7 a.m. when I'm going live with Chris Hearn from ULG to talk about SAP deployment. And with that, I'm quitting while I'm ahead. Peace.